All right, on the landslides in Vayanad in Kerala, I am now being joined by Joseph Hoover from the United Conservation Movement to understand, is this area particularly vulnerable? Has the government been caught sleeping? What are the ways to avoid this going forward? Imagine a bridge has collapsed, 45 people are dead, many are missing, almost 450 families are displaced. What are the reasons? Joseph Hoover, welcome to the broadcast. Joseph, hi. Tell us, I, what I have seen is that year after year, it's the same story. This is not the first time that Vayanad is witnessing land, landslides. Uh, many people say it's very vulnerable, you know, the kind of soil which is very loose, etc., etc. Over to you. Where are we going wrong, Joseph Hoover? As you said, rightly said, this has been happening over and over again. The government is aware, people are aware. Yet we go about destroying our uh, fragile ecosystem. And this was going to happen. Everybody knew about it. And what have we done as a human species? We just go about, go about destroying whatever little is left of us. And who's suffering? It's the poor people who, who are going to be you know, displaced, who are going to lose lives, who are going to lose everything in their life. I mean, it's Tell pathetic. Me something. If you look at it, yeah. uh, uh, very Joe, honest with you, if go you look on. at it, 2021 huh. itself, huh. The, um, the Geological Society of India has given a report to the government, not just Karnataka, it's been done in Kerala, it's done across the Western Ghat, saying that how fragile the ecosystem is and what needs to be done. They've given them systems how to stall, how to stop the landslide. But despite that, we're talking about 2021 March, we're already in 2024. And what has the government done? Nothing. And if you look at it, most of the landslides are happening because wherever the, the situation is, the, the hills are being chopped uh, unscientifically for so widening roads. So that's what I wanted and to ask you. Joseph, want I want development. Yeah, Joseph, I wanted to ask you, for instance, in Uttarakhand, it's there for everyone to see the kind of, yeah. you know, uh, brazen, uh, you know, um, uh, buildings have come up and only on the, in the name of development and, of course, the political po politics and builder nexus, there is, there are no doubt about it and you see a lot of landslides, you see every day environment changing, climate changing, landslides happening, yeah. deaths happening, but in Vayanade, you know, they say it's a particularly different terrain. Would you agree, Joseph Hoover? See, that ecosystem is very, very fragile. The people are aware of it. The government is aware of it. Because if you look at it, it's been happening uh, pretty frequently out there. And uh, all systems are in place to say that you need to be watching out. And especially North Wayanad is very, very uh, vulnerable to such uh, landslides. And especially when there are heavy cloud bursts, you are going to be in trouble. It happened in Hidukui, we see how it happened in 2019-20. And uh, whenever I travel there, I always cry out to the Lord saying that, my God, how, how are we going to save these people? Because the people themselves are against nature these days. Everything they want in the name of development. The government says development, development. Why can't we live with what we have? And especially when we know that things are going to get worse. As you rightly said, extreme climate events have been battering us. At one time, there's no water to drink and there's drought. And then when you have uh, uh, extreme rains, then there's floods and there's uh, landslides. Everything is washed out. I mean, where are we going as humans? Aren't we, don't we have common sense to stop this reckless um, uh, development? All GDP, GDP, you know, the value of the forest is much, much, much more bigger than whatever your 5 trillion, 10 trillion, then, 20 trillion dollar economy. Who's to tell them, to Joseph? Stop this. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not blaming the government. It is us. We as people have failed. Because I cry out, because every time we tell people there's something needs to be done, nobody joins us, uh, unfortunately. I know. And every time they wake up and say, uh, this is what is happening, how do we do this? And unless they speak up, unless they step out and say, government, enough is enough, only then this can be stopped. But I think we have reached the zenith of our destruction. We have gone beyond uh, redemption. That's the way I would put it. Joseph, have you been to this area earlier? Did you mention that you have been? And, you know, what did you find there? Did you find that the people themselves are not bothered about the vulnerability of the natural habitat there and want more buildings and more structures to come up, Joseph Hoover? 
Yeah, the way I see, the, um, it's very unfortunate to talk about this, especially in Kerala. People are anti-nature, anti-animal. They want everything for themselves. And when you destroy nature, you know it's going to hit you back. They are aware of it. But still, if you look at it overall, they are always against the recommendations of expert committees. They're saying, no, we don't want Gadgil report, we don't want this, we don't want that. Everything is opposition. And why these uh, recommendations have been made? For their own benefit. When your ecosystem is in place, you're also safe. But people don't seem to understand that. And we see a lot of uh, uh, think, uh, uh, people going against the forest department, going against the government when there's an issue related to the forest. They all should come together and saying this is the time we need to save our precious forest, our precious biodiversity for our own good. But that's not the case. In Kerala, especially certain groups are against nature, absolutely against nature. They don't right. want elephants, okay. they don't want tigers, nothing they want. Yeah, on that note, Joseph Hoover, thank you so much for joining us.